Hey guys, Brett Weiss here. Thank you so much for tuning in and thank you for hitting that subscribe button. It really helps out the channel. Thank you so much. So I was recently talking to a friend of mine, uh, a longtime gamer, who we were talking about the Intellivision Amico and how excited we are for it and, you know, for the couch co-op and the remakes of Intellivision games, you know, classic Intellivision games and that kind of thing. We are very pumped about this uh, console, as are a lot of other, you know, longtime hardcore Intellivision fans. But we were talking about what the console needs to make it in a very crowded market, you know, past just hardcore, you know, Intellivision fans. What does the console need to, um, you know, reach a broad audience? The moms, the kids, the casual gamers, and even the, you know, hardcore gamers that just play typically more modern games. What does it need? And my friend was saying it needs a killer app, a console seller, a game that is so awesome, so fun, or so revolutionary, or just so buzzworthy that it just sells the console itself. There are certain games that can sell a system. Now, for me, and you know, a lot of other people like me that grew up playing the Intellivision, um, I mean, I played it back in not in the early, you know, from 1980 on, you know, big Intellivision fan. And, uh, you know, I know it was test market in 79. And I, I think I played it in the Christmas of 79. But whatever the case, I have fond memories of playing it all throughout the 80s and on and on and on. And so I'm excited for remakes of games like Night Stalker, of course, and Shark Shark. A new iteration of Burger Time is going to be super cool. And the... Uh, Moon Patrol uh, looks super exciting. Obviously, for me and people like a lot of people like me, the Amico. There are a lot of killer apps for that system because there's a bunch of games I want to play, and they're going to be Amico exclusive. So the Amico for me is a no-brainer. And my friend who I was talking to, he pre-ordered the console. I pre-ordered it, the Founder's Edition, and so we're excited about it. We don't we don't need necessarily a big viral killer app because we have our own killer apps. But a true killer app sells to a mass wide audience, and the, the, the Amico uh, needs that. And with all the uh, advertising so far with the Amico, the uh, videos and the different you know articles about the Amico, I'm not sure I've seen that killer app yet. It needs to be something that really gets, you know, particular, everybody's talking about the Amico console, but I'm not sure I've seen a, a specific game yet that just has everybody, you know, that will, uh, that could make the console go viral or that will make the console just a system seller, a single game that's going to sell tons and tons of consoles. Maybe it'll be Earthworm Jim when we see more of it. Who can say? But regardless, my friend thinks that um, the Amico needs a killer app to sell consoles, and perhaps he's correct. That, that makes a lot of sense. So a lot of systems from the past have had killer apps, and I want to talk about some of those for you. And apps is sort for application, if you don't know, but it just for consoles, it just means... Um, like I said, it's just a specific game that helps move a lot of units of the console itself. A single game can make a console, can make it successful. So I'm gonna show you some games in my collection that I have that were killer apps. Uh, let's start with the Intellivision, good place to start. Major League Baseball. Now I can't believe I don't have a boxed uh, example of this game. So it sold tons and tons of copies. I do have the cartridge in the manual. A great game and so much, so revolutionary compared to sports games before it, especially baseball games before it. I remember playing the very primitive home run and on the 2600 and baseball on the Odyssey 2. Having a lot of fun with those. But then when the Intellivision came out where you can actually see a diamond and the characters, you know, the players look more realistic. You know, it's all relative, relatively speaking, but it was so revolutionary and it was a huge seller on the Intellivision. It moved a lot of consoles, as did NFL football and NBA basketball and a lot of, a lot of other sports games because the Intellivision was a major sports console for two players. I would put Major League Baseball as the number one killer app. I think that was a killer app for the Intellivision. If the console has one, it's probably Major League Baseball. Let's go to the Atari 2600. Now, um, in 1980, Space Invaders was released for the Atari 2600. Now, the 2600 itself, the console came out in 1977 as the Atari VCS. And the console, it did moderate, you know, it did relatively well, but it didn't really blow up. It didn't truly become, you know, this iconic, ubiquitous system until Space Invaders. This is the first officially authorized port for a console. And it was a great port. It didn't mimic it exactly because 
I mean, I guess the, the 2600 probably wouldn't be able to mimic, mimic it perfectly, but it did look great, the invaders look great, and it added a ton of features, a ton of options. And I love that because when Space Invaders was in the arcades, by the time, not you know, it came out in 78 in the US in the arcades, when Space Invaders for the 2600 came out in 1980 for the Atari VCS, I was tired of Space Invaders for the arcades. I was burnt out on it. So I was really excited that they came out with a lot of different options on the uh, 2600. You know, as it says, 112 video games, that's a little bit, uh, that's, a, that's some hyperbole there, but it does have 112 options. It's awesome. There are so many different things, you know, moving bunkers, disappearing invaders, two player uh, simultaneous, just a great game. I highly recommend Space Invaders for the 2600. Definitely a killer app, absolutely no questions asked. It made the Atari 2600, you know, the iconic viral system. It became just a great game. And a lot of it started, just the popularity of the 2600 console began with Space Invaders. Another killer app that's undisputed is Donkey Kong for the ColecoVision. For the first time in your home, you could play a cartoon-like arcade port that looked a lot like the arcade game. There were good ports of arcade games before this, like Breakout for the Atari 2600 and a number of others, but Donkey Kong was the first port that really looked like uh, the arcade version of a sophisticated uh, arcade game graphically. Just looked really cartoon-like. Three of the four levels, you know, it was missing the intermission screens in one of the levels, but still a great port and it looked amazing. Those of us who grew up with the Atari, the Odyssey 2, and the Intellivision could not believe what we were seeing when we saw that commercial for this uh, in the summer of 82, and I got my ColecoVision in 82, as, as I've mentioned many times, but this is a definite version of a killer app, and it was brilliant of Coleco to include it with the console, because it sold a ton of consoles, and um, the reason I have cartridge only is because it came packaged with my ColecoVision, uh, you can get a box Donkey Kong because they did sell those, but they were very limited in number. They produced those, so if you had like an Atom computer or if you played ColecoVision games some other way, um, you could buy Donkey Kong or maybe you bought a used ColecoVision without a Donkey Kong. You could buy Donkey Kong in the box, but those are very hard to find today. The boxes, you know, the individual boxes for Donkey Kong because this just came packaged with my ColecoVision console. Donkey Kong, a major app. Another no-brainer in the... Um, an obvious choice for a killer app is Super Mario Brothers for the Atari, uh, the Atari for the Nintendo NES. The NES was test marketed in '85, and um, Super Mario Brothers was a launch title, and it was a brilliant launch title. It was so much more just vast in scope, and it was you know just huge scrolling worlds uh, relative to what came before it. It bought you know it. Probably, um, perhaps inspired by Pitfall, but that wasn't a truly scrolling game, and it just had all these, you know, secrets and surprises, and just such excellent controls and gameplay. Super Mario Brothers sold a ton of NES consoles. Definitely a killer app for the NES. The NES had several killer apps. Super Mario Brothers 3 certainly was as well, but Super Mario Brothers really got the ball rolling with the NES in the U.S. Another killer app. And it's what got me to buy a console was Sonic the Hedgehog for the Sega Genesis. The Genesis was released in the U.S. in 1989. Sonic the Hedgehog came out in 1991. And this was when the era when, you know, marketing with Sega, uh, they started marketing it as a cooler alternative to the rather stodgy, at least so marketing said, Super Nintendo, that Sonic was a cooler, faster take on the platforming genre established by Super Mario Brothers and then Super Mario World on the uh, Super Nintendo. They marketed Sonic the Hedgehog as a cooler character and the Genesis as a cooler console and Sonic sold a ton of consoles. This is what got me to buy a Genesis. I didn't get my Genesis until 91 when Sonic the Hedgehog came out and I'm really glad I did. Love me some Sonic. Another killer app is once again by our friends at Nintendo, Super Mario 64 changed gaming. It's a 3D platformer, really the first of its type, expansive worlds, and it, it pretty much established their 3D platforming game. Just a phenomenal, um, revolutionary title. Now, killer apps don't always have to be revolutionary. They don't have to, you know, invent a new genre or change everything completely, but this one certainly did. Love Su Super Mario 64. That's what made me get a Nintendo 64. Soul Calibur. 
Great game for the uh, Dreamcast. Now, this is kind of the exception that proves the rule. Um, Soul Calibur was a system seller for me and a lot of people, but it may not be quite at the killer app status because it didn't save the Dreamcast. The Dreamcast died way too soon. It wasn't on the market nearly long enough for such a great console, but I wanted to show you guys this because a lot of people bought Dreamcasts so they could play Soul Calibur because those of us who loved Street Fighter 2 and Mortal Kombat, wow, Soul Calibur just blew our minds with how slick it was and just what a fantastic representative of the fighting genre. Just a great game and a, I mean, if you don't have a Dreamcast, you should get one just for this uh, title alone and kill her out, to me at least, Soul Calibur. Great game. Now, another, one of the, you know, most successful, most, the best example, you know, one of the very best examples of a killer app is Wii Sports for the Wii. Now, I didn't, I wasn't planning on getting a Wii right away, but I knew they were popular when they first came out, uh, and there was a ton of buzz over the Wii and just how much fun Wii Sports was, bowling and tennis in particular, but my sister and brother-in-law got a Wii not long after it came out, and I went over to their house to play it, and holy cow, I was absolutely blown away by bowling and tennis, in particular on Wii Sports. Loved me some Wii Sports. Not only do I love the main games, but the little mini games that come with the, the sports on here are just fantastic, especially the target tennis game and the bowling game where you can roll, down, roll over like, you know, tons and tons of pins, like a hundred or whatever, I don't remember. But I love Wii Sports, and it got me to be an early adopter of the Wii. Usually I'll wait a while for a console to buy one. I'll wait for a price drop, or maybe to even buy one used or something. But the Wii, I bought it just not too long after it came out based on playing Wii Sports. A major, major killer app. And this sold tons and tons of Wii systems, without a doubt. Everybody was playing the Wii based on this. Grandmas, aunts, uncles. Everybody, little kids, everybody loved the Wii. It seemed just a great console for uh, motion control. Wii Sports was just a fantastic game and a major killer app. Now, last but not least, just wanted to show you a few examples from my collection is Halo for the OG Xbox. I love me some OG Xbox and Halo is just a great example of a first person shooter. Now, I'm not a huge fan of first-person shooters. I don't really like Call of Duty and a lot of games like that, but I absolutely love Halo, and I spent a lot of time with Halo 2 as well. And um, I had an Xbox before. You know, I didn't, Halo wasn't my first game for the Xbox, but I do love me some... Um, you know, I'd played Xbox before that, but come to think of it, when I bought, the, when I bought my Xbox... It was the Halo edition. That's, I'm, just, I'm just remembering that. I didn't buy an Xbox right away. I didn't buy, buy the black version with the big fat controller. I bought, uh, I waited until the green Halo edition Xbox came out. And so that's my Xbox. And for me, I guess Halo was a killer app. I'm, I was sold on the, um, you know, I love themed consoles, so that really sold me on it. But I love me some Halo, and I did play it before I actually owned an Xbox. A great game. I played it, I believe, at a video game convention. Just a great uh, first-person shooter. I like to call it the first-person shooter for people who don't like first-person shooters, not because it's not a great example of the genre or changes things a lot, but it's just very intuitive. The controls feel great. It saves progress as you go. Just a great game, and I, I loved Halo 2 as well. I kind of quit playing it after that, not because I didn't like 3 or 4, but first-person shooters aren't my first, you know, that's not my favorite genre, but I did love me some Halo. Anyway, those are some great killer apps, some reasons to buy those specific consoles. Let me know in the comments, what, what game, what specific game made you say, hey, I have got to have that console. Also, what do you think the Intellivision Amico needs to succeed? A killer app, perhaps? Thank you for watching, guys. Thank you for subscribing to the channel. Thank you for liking the video. I really appreciate it. We will talk to you guys later.